Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Elaine Doherty. I work with um, City Fibre. So I want to talk a little bit about um, sort of my background, which isn't that traditional. So first, I've got a couple of teenagers myself. They're, they're both bigger than me now, so that photo is a little bit old. There's loads of cake. I love eating cake. <laughs> I have a dog and a cat. But part of kind of growing up, I would take the Hoover apart. I would take bikes apart. I always wanted to know how and why things worked. Um, I still have a tendency to take things apart. <laughs> so, and that's kind of, that curiosity, that creativity has kind of stuck with me throughout my whole career. Um, I love learning. Part of taking things apart is learning. Um, working in technology now for nearly 30 years, um, so I'm not as young as these guys, um, it allows me to keep learning because technology is changing and evolving all the time. So when uh, I was 16, I was a bit naughty. I left home and left school at the same time and um, went down to London and got a job working in a hotel um, because I got a roof over my head and I was paid wages. So I was safe and I had money. Um, the reason for that is I grew up in hotels. My father ran a hotel chain. So I spent a lot of my um, time in hotels with grown-ups and I didn't feel I fitted in at school anymore. I was a bit older than the rest of the kids. Wasn't sure what I wanted to do. New hotels, because I'd done the pot wash and cleaned the toilets and been a chambermaid. So I thought, and done reception and switchboard. So I thought I'll go down to London and do that whilst I figure out how I use my skills. I moved um, back north. Um, my mother took ill and I moved um, back north and I worked in advertising. Uh, advertising was using my creativity. The reason there's a white blank sheet of paper there is in advertising, you are starting with a blank sheet of paper. So it was using my creativity to help solve a problem for a client and they had a business and they needed to sell more. So my job was to try and portray that on what, how good they were and what they did and what offers they had on paper. I then moved into technology. I was offered um, a job with a Scotsman selling advertising or working for a company called Telewest, who's now Virgin. And I kind of liked the idea that technology, this was a new technology going under the ground. This is 27 years ago and that how that would change our lives. So that um, is what I decided to do. So Virgin, some of you will have Virgin or you'll have Sky or you'll have um, BT, you'll have lots of different service providers. Virgin is just one of those. They were doing cable TV and um, internet access and uh, phone lines at the time. Then I moved to a company called Dolphin. So this handset looks really old fashioned and fuddy duddy. It's actually a radio handset. It's Dolphin delivered radio access networks. But those handsets are still used by all police, fire and ambulance today. I then moved to, this is really complicated. So I then led product teams. So all the little blobs on that slide, all the different technology, my teams built. So both the hardware and the software. And basically all of that makes up a 3G network. So it's all stuff you can't see. When you use your phone and um, your voice and your data goes through the air, there's a whole bunch of that technology sat behind making those calls connect. So I've worked in 2G, 2.5G, 3G, 4G, and now we're laying fiber to help facilitate 5G. I then moved to Motorola handsets. And the reason I moved to Motorola handsets was there were so many networks and it was more important what you did with the handset, what consumers did with the handset. So one of the problems consumer had, consumers had at that time was really being able to or wanting to access the internet um, and do that from a device. So I moved into handset land uh, and then moved into a mobile application provider called Surf Kitchen, which is, uh, might sound a daft name, but Surf is about surfing the web. Kitchen is about providing very easy menus um, for people to be able to surf the web. Um, and it was great fun because we did really cool apps um, before Apple, really cool apps um, that we delivered over the air to for Orange, Vodafone and T-Mobile. Because of my knowledge of mobile, I then moved to a company called Logica, who's now CGI. And my team uh, were an innovation team. So I got to use my creativity, my curiosity, and my collaboration skills thinking, right, we go listen to customers and consumers as well as businesses and say, right, what are your problems? And then we would devise solutions that would solve those problems. So we did that for Tesco's, the Ministry of Justice, and various other organizations. And it was great, great fun. So I kind of evolved slightly because I moved back up to Scotland and my knowledge had expanded into web, mobile and social. So I became a kind of digital transformation person. So basically working with companies, working on contracts, going into companies, understanding their problems and building solutions. So right back from taking hoovers apart and bikes apart, it's the same principle. It's understanding what is the problem, how do things, um, then devising a solution and making sure, understanding how it works for that client. 
So then I joined City Fibre. One of the reasons I joined um, City Fibre is not because of the fact that we dig the roads, because that, that people don't like that, but the fact of what that fibre will enable for all of us. So as we evolve, as technology evolves and we get the right infrastructure, so our clothes will have sensors in them, loads of the streets will have sensors in them, the amount of data we're all collecting and the amount of our internet uses, usage and access to the internet is growing year on year, about five times a year. So we need better infrastructure. So the art of the possible is why I joined City Fibre, because that the fibre we put in under the ground helps solve problems for all of you today, your parents, your teachers, your schools, the government, and indeed for your futures. So now it's more kind of about you guys. So I think the important stat here is the fact that 85% of jobs that will exist in 2030 have not even been created yet. And a lot of that is because of the transformation that's going on in our infrastructure, in mobile and in fibre, going in under the ground, um, and also the amount of data that is being captured. Because every time you use a mobile phone, every time you touch a computer, Anytime you use any technology, you're generating data. That data helps companies understand how to build products and services that meet the needs of your behaviors, if that makes sense. So we're collecting more and more data. So there's so many jobs that will exist that don't today. Health is a really interesting area of technology evolving, which is about people, people live longer and are happier, which is a contributing factor to living longer, if they get to stay at home. So there is a massive amount of investment in developing technologies um, that help monitor people's health at home. Um, so there is a lot of solutions out there, and part of the, the things we're doing with City Fibre and Open, which is doing the same, is making sure their networks are there to help capture that information and get it to health professionals. So if somebody has a heart condition, it's being able to monitor them at home, so for you guys, it could be jobs like you could be a virtual habitat designer um, using VR, 5G and fiber networks. It could be a telesurgeon. So I could be getting my heart operated on here in um, Sterling, but the surgeon could be in America. Um, so nobody physically is in the room operating on me. Um, and that technology exists today. Uh, it's in trials. It's not been rolled out. So that's a potential future job for some of you. It could be anywhere in the world operating on people and making them better. Data, I think I talked about like clothes, lampposts, telephone boxes, we, we're more the kind of our kind of infrastructure. There will be sensors on just about everything, on your clothes, um, more sensors in your homes, on, on kettles, on fridges, on your pet bowl. All of those sensors are to capture information and enable um, companies, enable more convenience for you and companies to develop technology. So even today, if my um, cat bowl, I haven't bought this, but if my cat um, eats all the food in its dish, and um, there's a sensor, you get dishes, cat dishes, there's a sensor on a dish that sends a message um, saying, your cat food dish is empty, I've ordered more cat food from Amazon, it'll be with you tonight. Uh, and that's using um, sensors and data e-commerce and lots of technology to make your lives and my your lives easier and my cat happy so i think the last one is more about uh, all my life i've loved learning and i still do and i think it's be curious you know question things be creative and creativity is not drawing or coming up with great designs creative creativity is using your mind and creative ideas to solve problems and come up with solutions and last one is collaborative um, is working together and you're going to be doing lots of that today which I'm sure you'll be great at so thank you very much.